Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, number one, I, I think this is an important hearing to have. Um, the role of the Second Amendment in average everyday life. Uh, Senator Cornyn worked in a bipartisan fashion to make some changes to background checks, uh, putting money into the system to deal with folks that are a danger to themselves or others to enhance uh, public safety. So there is a bipartisan uh, approach to some of these issues. But this sort of <clears throat> is the difference between the parties here, I, I would think, that uh, America Second Amendment was passed for a purpose. Uh, if you live in a kingdom and the king rules, the first thing they want to do is make sure they, nobody can object and that you're pretty well defenseless. You have to ask yourself, why did we have a Second Amendment to begin with? Well, if you understand the history of the country, people will fleeing England, uh, where you couldn't say bad things about the king, you really couldn't express yourself. So the First Amendment allows you to speak openly and to worship the way you would choose, not the way the king would choose, and on and on and on, the right to assemble. The Second Amendment is to be able to bear arms. Uh, there are millions, 1.7 million times per year, people use firearms to defend themselves. I have a very long list of people who have been able to protect their family, their property, uh, by having a firearm to ward off intruders and people who are acting aggressively toward them, particularly women. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like unanimous consent to put that in the record. Without objection. And what we're trying to do here, I think, is our Democratic friends uh, are trying to make the argument that the Bruin-Heller case, cases, uh, if they could, they would overturn those decisions. And I think people on our side are going to be unanimous in the idea that gun, responsible gun ownership is part of American society. Uh, guns are used every day to defend Americans, and people abuse the right to own a weapon. And uh, I would hope we could find common ground to go after those who abuse the right to own a weapon, who act irresponsibly and enforce the laws on the books. So what we will be doing in response to this hearing is that I've introduced legislation, federal law, that would basically codify, codify the Heller decision that uh, the Second Amendment right to own a weapon is an individual right, uh, and the Bruin decision uh, having a different legal analysis about efforts to regulate guns, more back to the historical perspective of why we have the Second Amendment. As you want to overturn these decisions, we will want to reinforce these decisions. We found bipartisan support for the idea of uh, background checks and trying to get guns out of the hands of people who are dangerous, Mr. Chairman. But we haven't had much success in finding common ground on increasing punishments for those who are involved in crime. We're, we're talking a lot about fentanyl, but we haven't done much to deter it. Um, all of us see the laws regarding sexual exploitation of children in need of upgrading. So what I hope we'll find is some bipartisan support to go after the criminal and reinforce uh, America's safety. This is a very dangerous time uh, in America, Mr. Chairman. The policies being pursued in the major cities in the, this country are not working on, on the drug front, on the public safety front. And here's the sad news. There's probably never been a more important time to be able to own a weapon than now. The threats to the average American are going up, not down. And at the end of the day, the Second Amendment is part of our Constitution, it is part of the fabric of this nation. There is bipartisan support to make sure reasonable gun ownership reigns, but there will be, on our side of the aisle, Mr. Chairman, a robust response to the idea of undoing the legal framework that has come out of the Supreme Court because we believe now is the time to reinforce responsible gun, owner, gun ownership not to undermine it.